E. coli cells live in our intestines and use glucose as their preferred energy source. When a person drinks milk, these cells encounter an alternative energy source, the sugar, lactose. Although E. coli can metabolize lactose, it will make the proteins for lactose metabolism only when two conditions are met. Glucose levels are low and lactose is present. This adaptation saves energy and confers a selective advantage in that only necessary proteins are produced at any given time. An operon is a group of closely linked bacterial genes and regulatory sequences that produce a single messenger RNA molecule in transcription. To understand how E. coli regulates lactose metabolism, let's examine a cluster called the LAC operon. There are three structural genes in the operon. The LAC-Y gene encodes the protein galactoside permease, which transports lactose into the cell. The LAC-Z gene encodes the enzyme beta-galactosidase, which cleaves lactose into glucose and galactose. Researchers are uncertain whether the other structural gene, LAC-A, plays a role in lactose metabolism. The LAC operon is regulated in part by a gene called LAC-I, which encodes a repressor protein. The LAC-I gene is always expressed. If there is no lactose present in the cell, the repressor binds to a regulatory region of the operon called the operator. When RNA polymerase binds to the promoter, the polymerase cannot pass through the operator site to transcribe the structural genes. The lac operon is therefore under negative control, meaning that a repressor blocks transcription. Lactose is considered an inducer of the lac operon because its presence can induce the expression of the structural genes. The inducer is really a derivative of lactose called allolactose, but for simplicity, lactose is referred to here as the inducer. Lactose works by binding to the repressor and causing it to change shape. In its new conformation, the repressor is inactive and cannot bind to the operator. This is an example of allosteric regulation. Lactose can also cause this change in shape while the repressor is bound to DNA. In this case, lactose releases the repressor from repressing the operon. The RNA polymerase can then transcribe the structural genes. The current understanding of the LAC operon is based in part on experiments performed nearly 50 years ago by Francois Jacob and Jacques Monod. Let's examine some of these experiments and the conclusions the investigators drew. To study the genetics of lactose metabolism, Jacob and Monod generated several classes of mutants. They exposed E. coli cells to X-rays, ultraviolet light, or chemical mutagens, which mutated E. coli's DNA at random positions on the chromosome. Next, the investigators spread the bacteria onto master plates to propagate the cells. The medium on these plates was complete. It contained a variety of compounds that would allow any of the mutants to grow. Each cell divided repeatedly to form a visible colony of bacteria on the plate. All the cells in a colony were genetically identical. To find mutant cells with defects in lactose metabolism, the investigators performed replica plating. In this procedure, a sterile velvet stamp is pressed onto the master plate to pick up bacteria from the colonies. The replica plate has medium containing only the sugar lactose as a carbon and energy source. The stamp is pressed onto the replica plate to transfer the colonies from the master plate. A control is also generated by stamping the colonies onto another plate with complete medium. Look at the pattern of colonies on both plates and try to find the mutants. Keep in mind that the investigators had to examine many more colonies than are shown here. Click the colonies on the master plate that contain bacteria with defects in lactose metabolism. When you're finished with this part of the exercise, use the play button below to proceed to the next part. Which regions do you think could be mutated to produce cells that cannot use lactose as a source of energy? To answer this question, click the appropriate regions of the lac operon. When you're finished with the exercise, use the play button below to continue. 
Now let's look at another way to find and analyze mutants. To test for the normal function of the LAC-Z gene product, Jacob and Monod used an indicator molecule called O-nitrophenyl-beta-D-galactoside, abbreviated ONPG. ONPG has a structure very similar to lactose and can be cleaved by beta-galactosidase. But when this molecule is cleaved, galactose and a bright yellow compound, O-nitrophenol, are released. The researchers now have a method of finding and analyzing distinct classes of lactose mutants. The ONPG technique allowed them to determine if the genes enabling lactose to be used were transcribed and translated even if lactose was not present in the medium. Let's examine colonies grown on a medium containing a carbon and energy source such as glycerol but not containing lactose. After ONPG is applied, a few of these colonies will turn yellow. Which regions of the LAC operon do you think could be mutated to yield this result? To answer this question, click all the appropriate regions of the LAC operon. When you're finished with the exercise, use the play button below to continue. Let's explore the role of glucose in the expression of the LAC structural genes. E. coli cells always produce the enzymes for glucose breakdown. So if glucose is abundant in the environment, E. coli will use this sugar as an energy source and repress the expression of the lac operon. This adaptation saves energy by reducing the production of unnecessary enzymes, those of the lac operon. This form of inhibition is known as catabolite repression. What happens to the LAC operon in the absence of glucose? An enzyme called adenyl cyclase is continually active in converting ATP molecules into cyclic AMP molecules. A pyrophosphate ion is a byproduct of each reaction. Under these conditions, the cell produces a pool of cyclic AMP molecules. Cyclic AMP molecules bind to proteins called catabolite activator proteins, or CAPs for short. When a CAP binds to a cyclic AMP, it can then bind to a site near the LAC operon's promoter called the CAP site. CAP facilitates a functional interaction of RNA polymerase with the promoter and thereby stimulates transcription. This is an example of positive control in which the binding of a protein, in this case CAP, activates transcription. Note that lactose must also be present in the cell, otherwise the lac repressor would bind to the operator site and block transcription. When glucose is present in the environment and transported into the cell, the function of adenyl cyclase is inhibited. The result is that ATP is no longer converted into cyclic AMP, and the cyclic AMP pool drops. Without cyclic AMP, CAP cannot bind to the CAP site and attract RNA polymerase to the LAC promoter. Thus, in the presence of glucose, the LAC operon is not transcribed efficiently. Glucose and lactose both affect the transcription of the LAC structural genes. E. coli lives more efficiently because it can regulate expression of the lac operon based on the presence or absence of glucose and lactose. Given the illustration of the lac operon shown here, which condition is correct? Click the appropriate answer. When you're finished with this question, use the play or next button below to proceed to the next question. Given the illustration of the lac operon shown here, which condition is correct? When you're finished with this question, use the play or next button below to proceed to the next question. Given the illustration of the LAC operon shown here, which condition is correct? When you're finished with this question, use the play or next button below to proceed to the next question. Given the illustration of the LAC operon shown here, which condition is correct?